This is Unsettled Souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. Ganji of The Media Speaks. Going ahead and giving you day two of your uh, massive Fukushima update. Although, I will be honest, um, the, the Fukushima news was mostly gotten to yesterday. I went ahead and extended it a day because of a lot of alarming news regarding nuclear issues that didn't have to do with the stupidity that is General Electric. A huge, huge section on North Korea coming up at the end of this. Uh, for those of you that don't normally watch the show when it's not Fukushima, I do have to do this. I do run a political show outside of this. If you're not interested in the election, then scan ahead five minutes. But I would be remiss if I did not do this. Friends, I got the results. I'm going to go to screen share really quick for uh, those of you on low def, high def. Uh, welcome aboard. You can see it on fact cam. Um, this is awful news. Um, one of the things to tie it into nuclear is that Trump is largely against subsidizing our own death. And unfortunately, he has gotten shellacked. Uh, Wisconsin CNN uh, politics uh, gave us this. Cruz, 48.3% of the votes. Trump, 35.1%. Case that you shouldn't even be in the damn thing. 14.1%. Delegates 36, Cruz 3, Ouch, Trump, Kasich 0. What is wrong with you people in Wisconsin? Really, Cruz, the banker Cruz, that's the best that you could do was Cruz. Um, terrible. Uh, of course, we know up front, uh, Bernie schlacked Hillary Clinton as well. Um, absolute schlacking. It was a good day. Uh, well, ABC, really. Anybody but Clinton. Um, Sanders being the big winner over, over Clinton. That's your good news. Not that I would ever vote for the man, but, I mean, let's be real. Uh, we do have to, uh, what was it Donald Rumsfeld said? We go to war with the army that we have and not the army that we wish we had. So, that's your election update. Um, horrible news for those of you that don't want to continue paying for nuclear power plants. Um, Sanders is right here regarding going into the nuclear issue now. Sanders is right here in part, but I'm upset that at no point did Sanders say when he called out General Electric, which I'm glad he did, at no point did Sanders ever say that... GE is TEPCO. The GE warned, was warned by people, and I'll give him credit, such as Sanders. He was warned. You can't build nuclear power plants in this area because you're going to have a, a huge earthquake that brings a tidal wave and washes the plant away. It's exactly what happened. But Sanders somehow, even when he's right, manages to piss me off by not calling this out. I'm dying because someone is smoking in the house. Bernie Sanders says Wall Street has said the hell with the rest of the people in this country and its hunt for profits. The Democratic presidential candidate on Monday told the New York Daily News that big banks and giant corporations like General Electric are destroying the moral fabric of this country. I would also say record labels that hire talentless people to divide us, such as Nicki Minaj, are part of the problem as well, but I digress. Um, the corporate America has shown us, that the last number of years, that Wall Street has shown us the only thing that matters is their profits and their money, he told the newspaper editorial board. Well, the trouble with this is, in part, that he's also a subscriber to the lie that is global warming, of which there is no global warming. So, I mean, what he wants to do is have the government take everything over, and I'm sorry there's nothing about our government or any other government that lends me to trust it with that much power. Um, he, made, he maintained that the Treasury Secretary has the power to identify what financial firms are too large and complex and direct them to break the banks up. 
And he doesn't say how he wants the banks broken up, but he is going to break the banks up. Well, that's a great idea. The trouble is this nutcase believes in global warming, which isn't happening. And the trouble with a lot of the global warming crowd is they do go in a nuclear direction. And even if you do believe in global warming, you're wrong, but even if you do believe in it, you must understand that the answer to that is not nuclear power, and uh, this has been agreed to by everyone. Uh, look up what Albert Einstein said about uh, global war, uh, excuse me, about nuclear power plants. He said that nuclear fusion and nuclear fission were one hell, one hell of a way to boil a cup of water. Um, moving on, uh, RT, guard at terror target, Belgian nuclear site killed, access badge stolen. Now, myself, Chris Busby, Lauren Moray, Helen Caldicott, um, Kevin Blanche, a lot of people that really don't have much in common have all been warning about the exact same thing. And the reason for that is that we're right. And those of us that don't listen to what we're saying, we have a word for them too. They are wrong. We have warned for a long time about what was going to happen to these nuclear power plants. Greenpeace, who I have very little love for, have managed to point out correctly that nuclear power plants are very poorly maintained and kept up. Well, a security officer at a nuclear power site was killed in the Belgian city of Chilori two days after terror attacks in Brussels. Local newspapers, Denier Hure reported, citing police sources. The paper added that the man's security pass was stolen. Chiorque is located about 50 kilometers from the Belgian capital. In other words, everything we've warned you about on this show has, in fact, in front of your eyes, been proven to be accurate. A security guard that says he was walking his dog, put that cigarette out, was shot dead in the early evening on Thursday, the paper said. His security pass was stolen, which alerted the investigators since the man was a member of the nuclear power plant staff. Earlier Thursday, DH reported that Brussels suicide bombers Khalid and Abraham al Bakhuri were planning attacks on Belgian nuclear power stations, and that the arrest of Paris attacker Salah Absalom had accelerated the plans for the terrorists. I guess the brothers, it says, reportedly planted a hidden camera in front of the home of director of Belgian nuclear research program. So they're keeping the nuclear power plant safe, and then what happens? They just steal it from his house. <sighs> Belgium is on high alert following the deadly Brussels attacks. Well, this is what happens. This is what happens when you do a number of stupid things. What's one of those stupid things? Referring to Islam as a religion of peace it is not a religion of peace. There are people in it that are peaceful, but the religion itself is not a religion of peace. There has been no reformation in Islam. Um, to any degree, I guess, that is noticeable anyway to those who have been jihaded, if you will. This is another one. This is from Yahoo News, Brussels. Belgium security forces tightened security at nuclear power plants across the country after deadly attacks in the capital city of Brussels, the Belgian news agency said. It said surveillance has stepped up and added security measures have been added. Well, maybe, just maybe, this wouldn't have happened if you'd have listened to all of us who have the correct views a very long time ago. But no, that would have, been inv that would have involved using the thinking part of your brain. And we can't do that, can we? No, nah, we just listen to Drake and call him an artist. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, Swiss poll, refugee crisis could trigger a new world war. Now, a lot of people are going to say that this is overreacting, and that this is uh, hyper, a, um, a hyperinflation of the problem, but no, it's not. Those of us who are students of history know that these kinds of things have created problems before. For instance, the Crusades. The Crusades were not a matter of Christianity fighting for no reason whatsoever. The Crusades happened because Christians were being slaughtered by the religion of peace, that's Islam, and if they did not defend themselves, there would be no Christianity today. Islam has triggered massive problems in the past, and of course, uh, standard unrest and unfair treatment has triggered atrocities in the past. Let us remember what um, World War II 
taught us. The Treaty of Versailles beat Germany way too hard, and as a result, we ended up with Adolf Hitler. Well, let's take a good look at what this gentleman has to say here, because I believe that he's right. Swiss People's Party, that would be SVP, that's what it's anagrammed in their language. A member of the parliament, Roger Koppel, warns that the European migrant crisis is so out of control that it could lead to a new world war. Writing in the well-woke daily newspaper, and there's a link to it, Koppel argues, that Europe is about to abolish itself due to a megalomaniac open border policy overseen by the likes of Angela Merkel. The basic problem today is Islam, writes Koppel, pointing out that the numerous terrorists who were born in Europe merely proves the integration has completely failed. Now let me tell you why it's failed. Because and I love Steven Crowder. I think he might be one of the best uh, journalistic commentators alive today. Do any of you worry when you go to church that a oh what's it what's a good example a Hindu is going to come into your church and kill you? Hindus and anybody. Let me ask, anybody here at all worried about the death threat that could be given by Hindus? Oh, uh, no. All right, uh, how about Buddhists? Buddhists, you know, do you worry that they are going to come and kill you at your Easter service? No, no, not really. The problem is Islam. Not all of Islam, but enough of Islam that we can say the problem is Islam. Yes, there are a few nutcase Christians that blow up buildings and abortion clinics. We got the Westboro Baptist idiots. I get it. But not at the numbers that we see with the religion of peace. And again, I'm not saying we need to, to hurt is, is your average Islamist. Your average Islamist, especially in America, would be sitting here agreeing with me. The only reason he isn't is if he shows up on camera with me, they'll kill him. The virulence of the Islamist terror is fact. Concealment, it says, or glossing over, does not help. France and Belgium are just a taste. It is an illusion to believe that politics can cope with this mass migration, asserts Corporal, and he's right. Cautioning that the failure of the elite to acknowledge that their failed policies caused the crisis will lead to political extremism. Corporal draws parallels to World War I, there's another one, warning that civilizations that fail to secure their borders are doomed and that disaster is on the horizon. Corporal's comments echo those made by numerous other prominent political and military leaders in recent months. It says earlier this year, Norwegian Army Chief Odin Johansson remarked that Europe must be prepared to fight to defend its values against the threat posed by radical Islam. Yeah, unless you want to have your churches burned down and your women in burqas. Because let's face it, Sharia always dominates. Do you realize, let me, let me point something out here. Do you realize that most, if not all, of Islam was spread by the sword? People do not choose to be Islamic. Don't you wonder why Egypt is Islamic today? And yet, the pyramids, Ra, uh, the Sphinx, how do you think they became Islamic? They were tortured into it. That is the only way that Islamic religion flourishes. The sword. Otherwise, nobody would want to be a damn member. It was also revealed back in January that the chief of Swedish Army General Anders Bronström ordered his troops to prepare for a war in Europe against skilled opponents within a few years. In other words, everyone except maybe Merkel can see the writing on the wall here. And we could very much be looking at a nuclear, a horrible nuclear escapade such as we've never seen before. I got people coming in, don't go away, because I've got the biggest report on North Korea that you're going to get anywhere. And it's dealing with the nuclear threat that they are posing, okay? I just want to say ever so quickly that the show is brought to you by Sticker Junkie. Now, not only do they make amazing stickers, but if you order your stickers from Sticker Junkie and you put in, hey, 
the correct views, put in correct views, you're going to get a discount above and beyond the great prices that they already have. Those of you on low def are seeing it right now. Those of you on high def, it's behind me, it's sticker junkie, make sure that you let them know, please, that you're a listener of the correct views and you're going to be thrilled with the stickers that you get, I, I promise you. And that, friends, brings us to the North, North Korea segment of the show. Why are they getting their own section? Because they are more of a threat than Vladimir Putin, who is very much a New World Order hack. Don't tell me that he isn't. They are more of a threat than China. They are more of a threat than Obama. They are more of a threat than just about anyone because they are led by a lunatic. RT, North Korea launches missiles towards Sea of Japan. Now keep in mind, Obama is evil. Putin, I suspect, is very evil. China, we know, is very evil. Hacking babies out of the mother's womb against her will. But they're not necessarily mad, insane, whatever, psychotic, to the level that we're dealing with here. Listen to this. North Korea has lost short-range projectiles in the direction of the Sea of Japan. South Korea Yonhap News Agency reports the missiles flew about 200 kilometers before landing off the east coast here at 420 in the morning of the Korean Peninsula. South Korea's Joint Chief of Staff said in a statement by Reuters. Now, North Korea is very fond of saying that this happens because of provocation. What they don't tell you is that South Korea doesn't genuinely point weapons at North Korea for no reason whatsoever. The North Korean regime tortures to the level and severity of Nazi Germany, if not worse. Um, they arrest you and three generations of your family for any minor infraction that the regime decides that you have done, and you live with bed bugs eating off of grass, sleeping upside down, literally, to avoid the bed bugs, and uh, starving to death. And you're not even allowed to ask what it is that you did. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people locked up in these things. This is a, a country with its finger on the nuclear button. The South Korean military said the missiles were launched from the northeastern city of Hamburg around 1519. Oh, I'm sorry, Hamhung. Our military is keeping close tabs on the situation and standing by with heightened defense posture, the GCS said, according to the Yonhap News Agency. This latest launch comes days after Pyongyang carried out a ballistic missile test, firing two rockets into the sea. North Korea's lunatic leader Kim Jong-un said the secretive nation would carry out further ballistic and nuclear tests. And both Russia and now even China, who is North Korea's only ally, and they've threatened them as well, has criticized North Korea, saying they do not recognize Pyongyang's nuclear ambitions and that Kim should listen to the UN Security Council. Well, here's my question. Why is it that North Korea can build nuclear bombs and can't figure out how to grow their own food? Why would North Korea be affected by outside sources. Like, I wish America was as hermited, almost, as uh, North Korea. I wish we weren't involved in everybody's everything like we are. It's part of the reason that I support Trump to some degree. Bad management, that's why. Their country is managed by an idiot. They can't grow their own food, so when you put a sanction on them, they starve to death. Meanwhile, the only fat person in the entire, uh, in the country is the cheese, Swiss cheese eating Kim Jong-un. North Korea claims attacks on U.S. will kill more than 9-11 in the latest chilling threat. This is from mirror.co.uk. Pure madness. Those of you on screen share, be prepared to laugh with some of the graphics that North Korea has come up with here. I mean, when we talk about childish, they take it to a whole new level. 
North Korea has claimed that they will kill more people in America than the September 11th attacks. A ranting article in the Hermit Stalinist Nation's state-run publication, DPRK Today, said that their weapons are trained on the White House, the Pentagon, and other vital strategic locations. And of course, you know, America doesn't have any, any way to protect themselves at all, um, if you're an idiot. Do you honestly believe that America is going to let you launch a nuclear weapon at the White House and the Pentagon and nothing will happen? It read, if three civilian airplanes attacks from 15 years ago resulted in 3,000 deaths and brought a nightmare of life to the U.S., the outbreak of our final war will wipe the country from history, leaving no time for them to even regret or to have nightmares about it. Bullshit. Let me tell you what. This man is going to lose his regime. Okay, I'm playing this for the people on low def. Uh, just look at some of this. That, 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 that's their amazing music that they're playing for you. Um, as they they talk about, oh, how we're going to kill America. Being beaten by only three civilian airplanes, the U.S. was ashamed in front of the world. No, 9-11 was a huge inside job. And even if it wasn't, and it was, even if it wasn't, 3,000 people dying in the World Trade Center collapsing. I hate to be the one to tell you this, Kim Jong-il, but I, 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 I know you build buildings and there's nobody in them. I know China, they build whole cities and nobody lives there. You can look it up. People actually are in our buildings, so the fact that 3,000 people of them would die isn't that odd. And the fact that 9-11 was an inside job has everything to do with the way that the entire thing unfolded, including telling... Uh, our defense is to stand down when the planes were known to be rogue. Uh, moving on, New York Times. South Korea says the North has the capacity to put a nuclear warhead on a missile. This is dated today. Well, it's the 6th now, but April 5th, the day that I was researching this, is within 12 hours. South Korea has determined that North Korea is capable of mounting a nuclear warhead on its medium-range Rondong ballistic missile, which could reach all of South Korea and most of Japan, a senior government official said Tuesday. Now, the problem here isn't that we can't defeat the pathetic nuclear ambitions of uh, North Korea. The problem is that China and Russia, and, and Putin has been egging, begging for a reason to, to slaughter people because he's mad at NATO. Um, this could lead to people coming to the aid of North Korea that do not like North Korea at all. They simply hate us. And you see this in the number of idiots that stick up for Vladimir Putin just because we know that Obama's an idiot. He doesn't like Obama, so we call him our friend. And, uh, friends, you need to pay more attention to what's going on in the world. The government's assessment shared, it says, in a background briefing with foreign news media representatives in Seoul, Seoul, excuse me, Seoul South Korea, followed a recent claim by North Korea that it had standardized nuclear warheads small enough to be carried by ballistic missiles. It also says that the South Korean officials, like their American counterparts, have said that the North has made progress in miniaturizing nuclear warheads, but have been reluctant to elaborate. In other words, they don't want to let the North know everything they know. But let's face it, the North never really does much of anything, right? And they, uh, much less keep secrets of such magnitude. Um, he did not say if the North could actually built such a warhead or simply had the technology to do so, but said the government did not have any evidence that the North had actually fitted miniaturized warheads onto a missile. If they have the technology, it's very obvious that that's going to be something that they hope to do. Uh, North Korea also said that Mr. Kim had overseen a successful test of re-entry technology, which is needed for a warhead of intercontinental ballistic missile to survive the heat and vibrations through plunging through the atmosphere. And these place, uh, the test took place days after North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un ordered more tests of a ballistic missile. So the man, as you can see cl clearly from what I'm showing you here, is begging for a nuclear war, begging that it happens. 
And that brings us to the dumb deal of the day for North Korea. <laughs> on low def and the uh, HDEF behind me. I wish that I, uh, I'm going to try to zoom this in. I might just get, I'll end with it so I can get up and zoom it in because it is really that stupid. North Korea releases a video showing a rocket attack on a presidential building in Seoul and warning that everything will be turned to ashes. The funny part about this is North Korea stole the graphics in large part from American companies. And when you see their cutting edge technology, I don't know whether to call this a threat or to simply laugh at them. The only problem is that they could go nuts and chuck a nuke at someone. And they're probably not going to hit the person or the country, but they could trigger quite a, uh, quite a backlash is the fear. But, I mean, them and of themselves, they're laughable. They are so utterly pathetic. Uh, North Korea have released a chilling new propaganda. Chilling to who? A five-year-old? A chilling new propaganda video portraying a multiple strike on South Korea's presidential blue house and other governmental buildings. The shockingly low-budget, so how is it chilling, video comes with a frightening pledge from the hermit state who threatened that everything will be turned to ashes. Tensions have been rising on the Korean Peninsula ever since the North conducted its fourth nuclear test on January 6th. This is pathetic. Let me show this to everyone real quick before we go on. I, I was going to try to wait, but let, I'm not going to. So look at this. <laughs> seen Snake Man. It is, oh, quite possibly, the absolute worst graphics that I've ever seen anywhere until this video. The video seems to use archive footage of North Korean army with menacing soldiers riding around on tanks in bursts of artillery fire. And again, there's, there's stills of it, but I just showed you the whole thing. So, North Korea is terrorizing people with video game graphics. And again, the problem here is, isn't that we fear North Korea to any degree. It's more that we fear exactly what it is that they could wreak on all of us. And quite a bit of uh, problems and uh, fears there regarding exactly what it is. Again, what they could trigger. What they could bring China into. What they could bring uh, South Korea into. Which would drag America into it. Um issues with that lunatic Putin. I mean, it's bad. And friends, that's part two of your all things nuclear, I should say, massive Fukushima update part two. Do me a favor. If you can donate to the show, please do. Get a hold of me at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. And remember, if you're going to go anywhere, you need a cab, don't call it Uber, to hell with Uber. Call Change Transportation. You can look them up on Facebook. Let them know that you're a listener of The Correct Views and say, hey, I listened to Sam on The Correct Views. I'd like to get a discount. And guess what? You will. Good night, friends. God bless and thank you for listening.